Well, now we need to get in our art packet and start um, getting the materials we need for our very first project. Um, the first project is going to be kind of some stylized writing. And this is an example that I have started and I chose the word Jesus. And you're gonna have to choose some kind of word for your project also. So um, we're gonna get all our materials together and then I'll show you how to do this. And even if it has like a little something on it um, and you like that side, I can show you how we can still use that, okay? To get started, we're gonna need our uh, cardboard and choose the, the side that you like. And we're going to need an eraser and a pencil. It might be helpful to have a ruler, but I don't want you to be heavily, heavily dependent upon that ruler. Um, then we're also going to need uh, a piece of, of paper, possibly, and some scissors if you're having a hard time. Um, this will be helpful, and I'll talk to you about that in just a bit. And then you're going to need some kind of word. So on this one, I chose the word Jesus. Um, on my new one for my demonstration, I'm going to choose the word love. But, you know, of course, you could have peace. You could have uh, WSU Shockers, or you could do your name, like if your name's Derek, um, or your last name, uh, like, you know, the Smiths or, or whatever. So choose a word, just one word. The longer it is, the harder, more difficult this is going to be, the shorter it is, it's going to be easier. And you also want to find a word that will fit your cardboard. And if for some reason you don't like the cardboard that I chose for you, and you have something at home um, that's bigger or less marred up, maybe you don't like the little thingy that's on there, um, then you're welcome to use the cardboard that you have at home too. You just need to make sure it's going to be really helpful if it's cut in a, a straight. The first step you need to do when you choose your paper, find the middle. So I found the middle right here. Just make a small little dot. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there. And I'm going to do the word love and I've got one, two, three, four letters in the word love. So whatever um, Whatever word you choose, you need to make a plan, just like what I'm doing. The middle is gonna be right here, so you can tell the middle, um, I'm gonna have the L-O on this side of my half line, and the B-E on this side of the half line. Um, if you're doing the word peace, that's one, two, three, four, five, then it looks like your A is gonna be right in the middle, okay? See what we're doing here? And then you're going to have your CE on that side and the PE on that side. All right, so you kind of got to plan this a little bit in the beginning. So I'm going to go with love. And I've got my dot. I have the V and the E sketched out very lightly. I don't know if you can see it. And then some of you are going to just be able to just kind of uh, freehand this. And I'm going to do my O. And... I kind of want my letters not to be exactly straight. I kind of want them kind of, kind of bending this way and that way just a little bit. So this is going to be my O, and I want, I want on this stylized writing for all of my letters to be about the same thickness and width. Um, let's say you're trying this, and you you just cannot do this. This is just not working and it's too hard for you and you're frustrated, I have a little cheat idea that you can do. Just get a little piece of, um, of paper, a little scrap paper, and what I did is I, I folded it multiple times to get it the width of what I kind of want my letters to be, okay? And then I just um, cut these little strips. They're, because I folded it, they're all the same width. Okay, I'm just going to cut those, and now this is my, my cheater strips. So now I'm going to cheat just a little bit for my stylized writing if, if I'm having a hard time and I just can't do this. Alright, so let's say I'm having a hard time with an O, and I just cannot do what Mrs. Dahl is asking me to do. So this is just kind of cheats just a little bit, and Mrs. Dahl. Okay, so that kind of helped me out a little bit. All right, so 
Um, you can do that with whatever letters you're having a hard time with, okay? The E, the L, etc. Um, okay, now I'm done with that. I've got it like I want it for my basic word um, that I'm doing. And you can be thinking if there's any like star designs you want to do or heart or um, lightning bolts or something, um, you can be thinking about that too, okay? And let's say that you have um, a paper like this that you want to use and it's got an ugly marking on it um, and you're doing the word love, then um, let me just show you. Um, you would just, I'm, I'm not being real neat, but say, let's say like your L goes there. We know that it's going to get painted in the end. Your L's probably going to get painted. So all this is going to get painted over. And then these little spots that we don't like, we'll be sure and do some rip outs on those spots. So these little flaws that you might have, um, just uh, know that we can take those out of there, okay? All right, so let's get back to love here. Now it's time for Sharpie. You have two Sharpies. Um, I'd like for you to choose the fine and not the ultra fine. And now you're just gonna dive in and outline on your pencil lines your letters, okay? And then something else I wanted to talk about too, real quick, is I, I made my V and my E touching. I'm probably gonna make it not touch. I'm gonna adjust this because if, they're, if none of them are touching, then that seems to be more peaceful than, um, or have all of them touching. So on Jesus, all of them are touching, but if I left one of them not, touch, not touching, any, then it's going to look like a lonely only child letter uh, hanging out there if it's not touching any. So I want to, on my stylized lettering, I want to keep with um, all of it touching or none of it touching. And that's going to look best. If I just do a few, eh, it's going to look a little off. So I'm going to have to correct that right there. So go ahead and outline all these and then I'll tell you what to do next. I went ahead and put a couple little hearts on mine because I just, I don't know, it's kind of my thing. I always like hearts. And uh, you can, like I said, do your lightning bolts or um, stars or uh, daisy flowers or, you know, some kind of simple symbol like that. Okay, so I sharpied it all, but I do have all these icky little pencil marks. So I need to take some kind of um, eraser. This is a pink pearl eraser and I'm just gonna get rid of all these pencil pencil marks and next we want to break out the paints so now we're ready to start painting and you have a paint set um, I forgot to get a paint set for myself so this is a, a different type of paint set um, from yours but anyway you need a paper plate and I know I included a brush or two for you or maybe you have some some good brushes at home you need a water a container. You don't want to use a, a drinking glass that you will, your family will drink from. So use like an old pickle jar or something heavy like that. If you use something kind of plasticky, sometimes it'll tip over. Um, of course, you'll need your newspaper underneath you. You'll need some kind of paper towel thing to dab your brush and your water mess. And then on your disposable paper plate um, or cardboard or whatever you got that's disposable, um, you need to give a little squirt of paint. Now, um, you don't, I don't want to see you like squirt a little of every color on there, okay? That's just not realistic. You're not going to use that. Um, get a color plan, and on your color plan, maybe pick like three colors or, or one color for now. Um, or maybe you're going to mix the red and the yellow to make a nice coral color. Um, so anyway, get your color plan, um, just one to three colors on this whole thing is all we need, and squirt a little on your plate. You don't need much because a little goes a long ways, and we do need these paints for another project later. Okay, so um, I, I like to use a little water with these acrylic paints, um, just to thin them down just a tad. So 
um, and just kind of whirl it around. And, and it also helps it to, um, to spread because if I, if I don't, then sometimes it doesn't spread and it just kind of clumps. So for this type of project, I'm just gonna water that paint down just a little bit. And you know I'm terribly picky, so I don't wanna see you slopping outside of your lines and such. So let's say that you do slop out of your lines really bad right there. You want me to do it? Oh no, I made a mistake. So let's say that you slop outside of your lines and oh, it's just terrible and everything. Well, um, we just have decided then that that's probably where you're going to do a cut and a tear out, where that little sloppy spot was. But we don't wanna do that often because um, we, we want to choose where we're going to make our cutouts and not have that uh, be determined by our messiness, okay? All right, so continue on, and I'll, um, I would probably do this one in pink and maybe the L and the hearts in pink, and then it could be that I do these two letters. Oh, this would be fun, I had an idea. Um, I'll just do these two letters in polka dot pink. The guys are going, uh, and the girls are going, ooh. So anyway, this is gonna have like a polka dot pattern and it is going to be very neat. I do not want it sloppy. So maybe you want your striped. That's gonna be hard to do. Um, but you can come up with some kind of idea. You could just do them all solid colors if you don't want them in a pattern. So I would do solid pink, polka dot pink, solid pink, and polka dot pink. Pretend like I have this complete and it's painted like I want it. So um, when this dries, I'm gonna have to make sure that it's not too transparent-y. If I watered my paint down too much, it's gonna look too thin and I might have to do a second coat. So do whatever you have to do to make it look good. If you need a second coat, do a second coat. All right, so that's gonna dry and I'm gonna just show you the next step. So let's say we got this all painted like we want. So painting is complete, all right? And now we get to do this fun kind of thrashing around, making it look um, kind of, um, I don't know, it looks kind of inner city or something, um, graffiti like. Um, we're getting ready to use a sharp tool so tell your mom you're gonna use a sharp tool. <laughs> so if you have a, a little cutter like this, that is wonderful. If not, this is called like a box cutter. Maybe yours is a lot chunkier, but this again is like a little razor on there. Um, something like that will work. And if you don't have anything like that, just uh, kind of a, a little tiny sharp knife from the kitchen. Okay, when I use this thing, I do not wanna put my thumb right here and start whacking away. We always wanna put our fingers um, in front of or above of where we're cutting. We don't want to cut into our thumb, okay, or into our hand. This is bad. So put your hand up. All right, so um, I'm just going to punch in just a little bit and cut. I think I want to kind of get right down here in this V area and pick it out. Okay, so I've got that and I'm just gonna pick it out of there. And I'm gonna slowly pull away. And there we go, okay? And if I wanted it more, let's say I wanted a little bit more, I just kind of pick it out and tear some more. Kind of control it where you want the tear to go. I don't wanna leave that. That's gonna bug someone to look at. So I got that. Right, and that's a little torn out spot. And so I would just pick some other spots around here um, on your, your design to do. You gotta be careful not to slice into your, to your letter. That's gonna look bad if you slice into the, the S and tear it up. And I don't wanna tear into the S, so I have to kind of control where this is going. And when you're all done with this, let's look back at um, some of these outlines. 
you know, we can get really particular. This is artwork is a good thing to be particular on. We can straighten some of these up. We can go over the dry paint and make that look sharp and crisp. Okay. The more attention to detail on all this, the, the sharper it's going to look, the more impressive it's going to look. Some of you are older and you're starting to maybe put together a portfolio for college, for scholarships. So make it look good, okay? You can do this. Okay, and just keep on. Okay, when you get this all, um, all your little tear outs done, and you know, you just have to decide how much you want. Maybe you want a lot of tear outs, or maybe you just don't want very many. And some of you are working on this. This is gonna look cool too. You know, you just you just cut out and you do those tear outs, and underneath it's gonna look like this. So you're gonna have like this kind of look going on. Um, so that'll be cool too. So let's say you got it all finished. When it's all finished. Then I included a piece of black paper in your packet, and if you want, um, you can affect, attach that black paper to the back of it. Um, if your cardboard is too big, because some of you had big cardboard, um, maybe you just want to paint a black frame around it. Maybe you've got enough room to do that. I don't have enough room on mine. I, cut into my S, but I could paint a frame around it, or I could use this piece of black paper to put on the back of it. And again, I would probably do that with my glue stick. And whirl that around with this permanent glue stick. Center it up where I want it. Press it down. Okay and then it's complete. And when it's complete, then you want to sign your name. I'm gonna use the Ultrafine and sign my work. Now, when this is all complete, and this, this might take you a few days to do, to work on, to get, to get this completed, um, snap a picture and send it to me.